Good morning and welcome back. It's Sunday, May 16th, 2021, just before 9 o'clock a.m., and we're making the eastward transition from Interstate 75 to Interstate 4. Our destination, soon to be Park Road, just east of downtown Plant City, Florida. This Sunday, we're chasing after weekly CSX local 0708. Originating out of CSX's Winston Yard near Lakeland just before 7 a.m., then running out westward, working various industries and customers between there and Cherry Siding. Don't know where Cherry is? Well, we'll get to that in just a bit. We had gotten there just too late to see him working his first set of customers, which are based off of County Line Road, but with some help from my buddy Dalton, we were able to get there just in time to see him making the transition from County Line Road to his next set of customers over at Park Road. Pulling off at a private crossing, we were only there for a couple of minutes before 708 showed up. with a Leslie RS5T horn, CSX Jeep number 2624 would be leading the way, but on the bottom is what I really wanted to see today. B&O number 904073. That's the reporting mark on this Chessy system shoving platform which is now in service on 0708. I'll talk a bit about this in just a second, but it was in only about half a mile that 708 would come to a stop to switch his next set of customers. With the rest of the train down on the spur switching out the customers which reside upon it, the shoving platform was left right here on the main line for me and Dalton to gaze upon while the crew did their work. I'll ramble on about our shoving platform in just a little bit, but for right now, since we're here, let's get a look at the 2624, our lead engine for today. As I mentioned, this locomotive is equipped with a Leslie RS5T horn. This is the exact same kind of horn that's used on CSX 911 and 3194, not to be confused with the 1776, which wears an S5T, not an RS5T. Though in my opinion, it's much neater to see one of these horns mounted to a general purpose standard cab Jeep, since these were the locomotives that originally wore these. Now, this locomotive could still have this old horn for one of two reasons. Either one, it survived from the seaboard days when this thing ran for that company, or during one of its horn replacements, it got thrown on there since it was just what they had lying around. Either way, in my opinion, this thing sounds beautiful. Also, putting the drone in the air made me realize just how long the Park Road Spur really is. I didn't realize how far back this spur went until today. But even with as much commerce as there is, there comes a time to move on. And 0708's time to move on came in just about an hour. Pulling back up to the visible end of the spur, ready to pull out one final empty box car to go back to Winston today. And to accomplish this, they'd pull past the customer's switch, line it for their track, back onto the car and pick it up. Then after coupling to your empty car and pulling it out, putting it back on your train, you're now ready to pull the entire thing out of the spur and back on to what's left of your train, which right now is just a shoving platform. Lined up, 
conductor walks in to lace up the air brake hoses, and with that we'd run down the hill to Plant City to get them gliding through downtown. With a caboose shoving platform on the rear, which hasn't happened since 2017. <laughs> Clear of downtown, heading west. He's now on his way to work his customers at Cherry, which I mentioned at the beginning of this video. For those of you who don't know where it is, well, here it is. It's a siding just about two miles west of downtown Plant City. There's a few industries that reside along here, which 0708 is slated to work. We've set up trackside at the Salmon's Road Crossing, right in the middle of Cherry, and the industry that 708 has stopped to work would be James Hardy Building Products. Taking a look, we can see that there's a ton of stuff sitting at this place. I'm not exactly sure how this stuff gets organized and unloaded since most of it's back in the woods, but obviously most of what's here goes into what they make, or sell for that matter, as 708 would be to pull pretty much everything out today. <laughs> Let's talk about that shoving platform, the main hype for me today. As one may be able to tell, this is an old bay window style caboose which has been beat up over the years, however is still operating on a class 1 railroad. But then a better question, why are they called shoving platforms and not cabooses which quite frankly is what they are? Well because they're not used as those anymore. As one may remember from many locals around this area. On the very ends of these kinds of local switchers, they'll have aggregate hoppers, which are also used as shoving platforms. The term shoving platform is designated for cars which are put on the end of a train, which are specifically purposed only for a conductor to ride on, while locals like these make very long reversing movements. Since many locals in this area may be backing up for extended periods of time, they have cars like these designated for them so the conductor doesn't have to hang on to the side of a freight car while the train is shoving backwards sometimes between multiple cities. Now the big hype for me on this caboose style shoving platform is that these cars are disappearing. The aggregate hoppers which I showed earlier seem to be the preferred car for this kind of use as we haven't had one of these caboose ones down here in almost three years. Late 2017 was the time that the three caboose platforms that we had down here were shipped off. In fact, after doing some digging on the specific cars that we did have down here during that time, I found out that they were all scrapped. So to have had this one shipped down here and to have had the privilege to see it today was really something to behold, personally anyway. So basically, they're called shoving platforms because they're only intended for the shoving purpose and also because all of the entrances are sealed shut so nobody can get inside, so only the platforms on either end can be used. Anyways, back to our train. It's now time for that white refrigerated box car to go to its customer. And its receiver will reside about a mile west of here, the Florida Potato and Onion Facility, or as train crews call it, the Potato House. They had a fresh shipment of potatoes coming in, and 0708 was to be the job to drop it off. The industry lead, however, doesn't begin until cherry siding ends, so they'd have to leave the siding to switch this place. As a result, they'd have to wait a few minutes at the south end, because Amtrak number 91 was coming up on their rear and had to get by first. Oh. 
Also, what's the Amtrak Silver Service doing going so slow past this wide open straightaway? And that brings up a valid point. The Amtrak train isn't actually on the main line, but in fact they are in the siding while 0708 is on the main. Since the industry leads branch off from the main line, 708 has to stay on the main, putting any other trains through the siding. And since it's the siding, they can't exactly fly. So the engineer on today's 91 just slides it through. Ah yes, the potato house. 708 has made his way down here with his loaded car. However, there's an empty car that's already here, which is to go back to Winston with them today. And as part of their switching duties, they're going to have to pull that empty out and push the load in. And we'll see all of that right here. Shoving backwards up to the dock to pick up the empty car. Pulling said empty car past the switch where the tracks come back together. Using the other branching track to push the empty car down onto and out of the way. Then uncoupling the two cars, which requires cutting off the air and pulling up the cut lever, which releases a metal pin inside of the coupler, which would have held the knuckle in place beforehand. Pulling the cut lever releases the knuckle and allows the two cars to separate. And the air hoses, well, they just come apart. With that done, they can make the final reversing move putting the loaded car into position where the empty car once stood. This car is probably going to be sitting here for a while, so the conductor ties down some handbrakes to keep it from going anywhere. All right, one more couple up. Without the cut lever pulled up, the other locomotive closes the knuckle on the reefer, allowing the pin to drop back down and the knuckle to lock in place again, making the couple solid. And with that done, that was all they had to do here, so now it was back to their train and back to Winston. Ah yes, back on the main line, back at Cherry, now just east of where we were before, now it's South Woodrow Wilson Street, on the other end of 0708's consist, still on the main. We can see the shoving platform sitting there, and they were going to do something that honestly surprised me today. Instead of using the shoving platform for its intended purpose, using it to have the conductor ride on the end and shove the train back to Winston, they were still going to run the engines around the train on the main and pull it back to Winston with the shoving platform now being right behind the locomotives. The first time they've done this since the shoving platform has been here for about two weeks. Now whether this was crew preference or Winston's orders was beyond me, but it was interesting to see because it's another one of those scenes that we haven't seen for years. Four, three. Yeah, good. I want no defects. Restricting. No. 
You hear that radio call? It's time for some people's favorite train. Amtrak number 91 again. 708 wouldn't get off just so easy. 91 had made his drop-offs and pickups at Tampa Union Station and had turned his train around and is ready to head back out toward Auburndale, but once they were past Cherry, it was out of sight, out of mind for 0708's crew. <laughs> Once Amtrak was back on the main line, they could take off at full speed. And so could 708 since 91 would be out of their way pretty quick. That didn't give us a whole lot of time to get back to downtown Plant City, but we made it just in time. And to see this train setup was quite interesting and nostalgic, even though the shots were slightly rushed. this kind of speed under their axles, there was absolutely no way that we'd have been able to beat them to anywhere between here and Winston Yard. But since they decided to pull the train past Winston and shove it into the yard via the north leg of the Y, we were able to get there in time to see that. This would be the crew's last movement and their organization of the train inside of Winston would officially end their shift for today. And our chase. gates of old Tampa Highway would raise, signifying that the waiting drivers, and us, were free to go. Since they pulled the train by and backed it in, they effectively turned the locomotives in the opposite direction as compared to when they left Winston this morning, so in a sense we hit it just perfectly, cause one day earlier or one day later, and we wouldn't have seen the 2624 leading the train with its unique horn. And of course, the shoving platform because I've missed those ever since they left the state. Overall, an incredible chase up and down the CSX A line between Winston Yard and Cherry Siding. This was a bit of a longer video, but I had to include as many details as I could because this definitely was a unique experience and will definitely be one of my favorite of the year. As always, I appreciate you sitting through what you did. And until next time, this is Coda Beaner, and I'll see you then on the Sunshine State Rails.